May 25th, 1964. This is Dr. <laughs> preparing to test a hypothesis on SCP-169. 169 has been floating through and see at an incredibly slow rate, close to, but not identical with, continental drift. Various islands rests on SCP-169, and the sea level on all of them has not changed, indicating an internal buoyancy for 169 that is extremely precise. Little is known of 169. Age is largely disputed. Marked as anywhere from pre-Cambrian to pre-Solar. It only breathes every few months, which may suggest a dormant state. The need for shelter, sustenance, or external energy of any other form seems to be non-existent. When it's not breathing, SCP-169 is effectively dead to any means of modern detection. Bar 1, a low frequency emission from the head of 169. A debate has begun on whether this emission is brain activity, psychic ability, or as I believe, a form of sonar. In hopes of further communicating with 169, I will be broadcasting on frequency and hoping to receive or transmit data with 169. We have many reservations about SCP-169's response to this test. While the optimal would be complete constructive dialogue, we see that as the least likely option. Most likely, 169 is in a hibernation state and will not respond. An equal possibility is that SCP-169 will not understand human speech across frequencies. We've considered the possibility that SCP-169 will respond violently to communication. Use of SCPs 146 and 999 have been permitted. The area has been cleared of non-foundation personnel and satellite recordings have been displaced or otherwise doctored. <coughs> Beginning transmission attempt. Frequency matched. This is Dr. Cal at the SCP Foundation. Can anything hear me? This is, is Dr. Cal with the SCP Foundation. Can anything hear me? This is Doctor with the... Note for log. The frequency 169 was emitting has changed. Rematching frequency and reattempting communication. This is Dr. Counter. The frequency has changed again. I think 169 is trying to avoid hearing me. To counter, I'm going to leave this radio on this frequency and simply broadcast on another. I'll continue the process until 169 runs out of places to go. This is Doctor. This is... This... A slight problem has revealed itself. We did not bring enough radios to cover every frequency 169 has access to. 169 has not doubled back onto any frequency and is switching faster each time. While this may prove cognitive function, it also shows our inability to force 169 into communication. I will be pursuing an alternative method of placation. Ganges fan. SCP has switched frequencies at a rate slightly slower than before. Have we reached a cap? Or have I piqued its interest? Eel. SCP has returned to the original frequency. Marking the first time it repeated itself. Do you know SCP-3000? 169 has not switched frequencies. If we're lucky, we've broken through. We know you're very old, 169. We think 3000 is too. Have you two had any interactions in the past? SCP-169 just took a breath. This breath was 14 days early. I believe this proves that SCP-169 is currently not dormant. I just want to talk, but so far I'm the only one who's speaking. Can you respond tangibly? Seemingly as a response, SCP-169 just spiked across 300 frequencies. An approximation would suggest that this is all of the frequencies 169 is capable of speaking on. 
Do you have a name I can refer to you as? SCP-169 has quickly blinked the lowest recorded frequency. This may indicate a larger part of their speech. Do you understand the questions I'm asking? SCP-169 just blinked the highest frequency in its range. Further testing of communication is required. Do you have a method behind your choice of response? Highest frequency again. Is that frequency your way of saying yes? SCP-169 has blinked at the highest frequency for the third time. If this is a false equivalence, then it has fooled me. Please omit the frequency that means no, so that I may ask a proper line of questions. 169 has re-emitted the lowest frequency. Either they do not understand all of my questions, or they do not have a claimed name. I will assume the latter and continue referring to them as SCP-169. You responded well to talk of SCP-3000, the giant eel. Is there any form of bond between you two? SCP-169 confirms they know of SCP-3000. I will attempt to communicate in a way more complex than yeses and noes. Do you like SCP-3000? 169 has blipped various frequencies at the same time, with small pauses in between what may be words. If I'm interpreting correctly, this would indicate that 169 has a language. However, instead of letters one after another to indicate more complex words, 169 simply stacks all the sounds on top of one another. This draws a few interesting ideas to mind. The fact that yes and no have single devoted frequencies instead of larger combinations may have an insight into 169's speech patterns and overall etymology. I wonder if any other words have their own devoted frequency, but I have no way of checking. If 169 ever wanted to speak to another member of its race, both parties would need exceptional hearing and rapid cognitive function to discern and assign meaning to overlapping sounds. Any thoughts of 169 being of a lower intelligence are dead in the water, no pun intended. This is exemplified by 169's ability to understand human speech. SCP-169, I did not understand your last statement. For the duration of this interview, I'll only be asking yes and no questions. Does that make sense? Excellent. I would like to discuss your methods of propulsion. We cannot discern how it is you move. If we could understand your speech, would you be willing to tell us how you travel? SCP has answered no. While further explanation would be nice, we cannot hope to understand motives when we do not understand speech. Were you in a dormant state before I contacted you? 169 has answered with three frequency at the same time. Why this question wasn't a yes or no is unknown and will be skipped. Uh, have you always lived on Earth? SCP answered no and then emitted two dual frequencies. The significance of them is entirely lost on me. Do you have any malcontent for humanity? SCP has thankfully responded no. Do you have any malcontent for living beings as a whole? Another no. Do you recognise yourself as a living being? 169 responded by saying no and then emitting the same two dual frequencies from the Earth residency question. The meaning of these sounds should be determined post haste. Do you have any reason to lie to me? A quick no. During this conversation, have you lied to me? Another no. We have no way of verifying any of this data, and any tests could be intentionally or accidentally besmirched. However, since most non-malevolent ancient SCPs seem to be beyond lying, I'll assume that 169 is being entirely truthful. Because of the constraints of our communication, most of the pre-planned questions for 169 are entirely voided. There's nothing we can do to further contain 169 besides continuing to keep the public away. This investigation might as well be over. The only truly relevant data is that that one, 169, is relatively non-violent, and two, 169, despite consciousness, does not care to reveal themselves. A final set of questions come to mind. SCP-169, if I relieve and then return in an unknowable amount of time, will you cooperate with me as much as you did today? 
could you show me the same hospitality to any other Foundation scientist who was open to communication? Do we need to give you something to incentivize your constant cooperation with the Foundation? Very well. We will leave you to your solitary until we have a further desire for study. Thank you for your time, 169.